affected. Now, have the players been tested? Have you had any results back? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they have had a tough time of it, the Republic of Ireland, haven't they, with the amount of people that have tested positive. So, of course, it's been a concern for us. We've tested the players and all have come back negative, thankfully. And uh, we've, we've had a medical team that's looked at the game back and, uh, and there's no concerns at all. No concerns. I mean, it's difficult for the public to understand because obviously you can't get much more than a close proximity than when you're in a game of football. But uh, you followed all the guidelines and Public Health Wales are happy, UEFA are happy, I assume. Absolutely. All protocols that have been put in place, you know, over the, over the three camps we've had since September, you know, the medical team have worked tirelessly to make sure that we've got the, the best care and, uh, and protocols put in place. And it's no different on this camp. You know, it's been heightened by the time of year, maybe, and the, and the, and the virus um, thrives on the, on the conditions a little bit more. But, you know, we've, we've tested negative now on, on three occasions, and, uh, and that's, that's really good for us. Now, that is good to hear. So all players available uh, because of that. Everyone available for, through injury or fitness? Yeah. We've, we had a couple that didn't make it last week, but uh, they've all trained today and, and everybody is, is fit and re ready to go. So you're all raring to what is a really big game for, for you and, and the side, Rob. You obviously have the chance to, to top your group, to win promotion to the top tier, which was the aim. But I'm sure there are people in the FAW who have made you aware that there could also be a World Cup playoff place up for grabs. Or you can certainly put yeah. yourself in the frame for one. Absolutely, and that's that's why it's a big game. Um, you've just you know alluded to it there. It's it's for many reasons, but for us to be able to into the, the World Cup qualifiers, and then irrespective of where you finish in your group, worst case scenario, then you, you might still get a playoff place. Uh, that means there's everything to play for. Um, but we want to we want to finish in style, and we want to top the group. And like I said, you know the icing on the cake would be to get promotion out of the, the league as well. Yeah, three wins from the World Cup. Imagine that, hey. Um, and you're on a roll. It's, uh, it's, it could be a record number of unbeaten games in competitive fixtures. You said before standing in for this camp, you wanted to keep the momentum going. I'm sure you feel that you've done that now. Absolutely. Yeah, there's aspects of the performance we've, um, we want to improve on. Of course, you know, you're never completely satisfied. I was very rare that you're completely sat satisfied at the end of the game. Um, but one part of coming into this camp was to keep the momentum going. And, and like I said, against the USA, um, against the Republic of Ireland, we achieved that. And it sets us up nicely now for a tough game tomorrow evening. It does indeed. Another clean sheet wouldn't go amiss either. I'm sure as a former centre-back, you appreciate that. Uh, but at the other end of the pitch, you said you, you, you looked at plan B in the second half on Sunday. Does plan B become plan A? <laughs> It's a consideration, of course. You know, we've got a full squad of players to choose from as well now, which is encouraging. And uh, and and like I said on on paper before the Republic of Ireland game, it looked like we could create uh, a few chances, which is something that we've we've not quite done. You know, all right, we're winning games one nil, but we would like to create more chances. We didn't quite achieve that first half against the Republic of Ireland, so that's something we we'll look at again. And whether it's whether it's you know whatever personnel's on the pitch. Which, irrespective of formation or personnel, we want to start creating more chances to give ourselves the best option to score more goals. Yeah, just finally from me and on that, Rob, is that it seems incredible, really, that there are Wales fans who sort of are bemoaning the fact that there are 1-0 wins, that we're grinding wins out. Obviously, Wales have not always been in a position where we've been able to, to be all too choosy about winning games. Is it part of the development? You clearly want to be more expansive. You want to score more goals. Or shouldn't we just not grumble and just be, just be thankful? Well, I think it says a lot about how far we've, we've come in, in, in the last three, four years. You know, with the, the, the expectations now are far higher than three, four years ago. So, you know, we, we ex supporters now expect to win games. And, and like coaches and managers, you know, and you want to you wanna win in style. You want to not only win the game, but you want to give a good performance as well. And I felt a little bit frustrated after the Republic of Ireland game. I'm not going to lie. So I was like the supporters, you know, yes, it was a 1-0 win. It was great. We, we, it was a job done. But, you know, from a performance point of view, we know we can, we can do a little bit better. So not completely understand it. It's because of the success we've had in recent years that's raised the expectations. And, uh, and you know, we have, to, we have to continue to improve. 
I'm sure everyone would take a 1 0 win on Wednesday night, Rob. Best of luck to you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Chris. Now go to Aidan McGee of Sky. Hi, Rob. Um, I just wanted to take you back. So the, hi there. Just uh, wanted to take you back to the beginning there. What's the testing protocol in the camp? Because you've not had any cases, and as you mentioned, you know other countries have suffered quite badly with it. Has it been just a bit of good fortune as well as good planning? No, absolutely good planning. You know, we we're organised before camp. The staff and players get tested by the FAW anyway. We do that. We don't have to. But we do that to make sure that everybody's coming on camp with a clean bill of health. And then you wait for obviously do it two days before the game. And then we get those back within 24 hours and, uh, and, and, and know that we've got the confidence going into all games then that we've, we've got a full negative uh, test result. Your defence, as Chris mentioned, has been very tight of late. How much of a headache is the suspension of Ben Davis? Because as a Premier League player, he'll be a big miss. Yeah, Ben's, Ben's a massive part of, you know, what uh, what we're doing here and his experience, you know, counts is, is brilliant on and off the pitch as well. I said at the beginning part of the camp that uh, you know with with Chris Gunter and Baylo and, and Ben, those three have been leading the standards in training. It's been excellent. So of course he's going to be a miss a loss not only on the pitch but what he does and what he offers for the group as well. So, but it gives somebody else an opportunity to step up and uh, and and that's what this game's all about. We've got strength and depth. We've got a squad big enough and fit enough now to to put somebody else in and, and give a good account of themselves. Finland have emerged in recent weeks. They've had some excellent results recently. Obviously, they're, they're winning France as well, the 2-0. I mean, is there a danger of just trying to avoid defeat in this game? Are you minded, though, to really attack them as the home side? Yeah, it's in, it's in our hands, isn't it? So, we, we, we approach every game that we want to win. You know, we never go into a game trying for the, playing for a draw. So, the approach will be exactly the same as any other game for us. Um, they have to win the game, so we have to be mindful of that. They'll have a game plan. We'll we'll know within a couple of minutes of the game starting as to what they want to what they want to do. Whether they're going to press us high, whether they're going to sit back and try to counter. So we've worked on a few uh, aspects of that today, and uh, and we'll be fully prepared for it. And how hopeful are you that Gareth moved a step closer to his optimum level with that 90 minutes he gained on on Sunday? Because he's had a rough time of late in terms of getting himself match fit. Yeah, games help. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been, I've been there myself. You can do all the training in the world, but there's nothing like getting that fitness for games. And and certainly, ninety minutes will absolutely help him. And uh, and yeah, hopefully we uh, you know we get the rewards of that again now. Could the schedule we're going through at the moment help him in some ways? Because it's you know the volume of games might help him reach his best level possibly quicker than it might have done twelve months ago. Yeah, um, and I think with regards to club football, you know, they'll be managing that. It's it's about getting your players. In the optimum uh, level of fitness for for games, not training. You know, you've got to manage that load through the week so that you get your best players on the pitch and and in the best form uh, and in the best condition, ready for the game. So, yeah, the games are coming thick and fast. You know, we've got championship players here as well, and the, and the the schedule is relentless for them. Two games a week, so their training will be uh, minimal. So it's about getting them ready and peak condition for the games, and, and Baylor's no different to that. Thanks very much indeed, Rob. Thank you. Okay, Beth Fisher from ITV. Hey Rob, you're right. Hey Beth. Uh, Wednesday night under the lights. Are you excited? Yeah, absolutely. It's come down to this. You know, we thought it might do. Um, there was a uh, potentially could have been done on on Sunday against the Republic of Ireland, but we did come into the camp prepared and ready that if it does go to the third and final game, then then we'll be ready for it. And uh, we've had another good training session today. The boys have worked really hard again, and everybody's fit, ready to go. Just with your experience, obviously, playing in the team during the, the time you did and now seeing the way that uh, Wales is kind of going up on the trajectory of, of performances, how good does it feel to be part of this? Oh, absolutely. To be part of my, you know, the other job I've got with the development of the young lads is the, the Football Association of Wales should be very proud of, of the investment that they've made into the young lads. The facilities we've now got, one at the Vale, you know, Dragon Park and Colliers Park, three, you know, elite centres that uh, are helping with the development of these young lads and the first team are reaping the rewards of that. So, you know, not only watching what the first team are doing, but certainly watching the intermediate groups as well. Um, develop these players and, and fast track them through to the first team is, is absolutely rewarding. Just in terms of, you know, a couple of things I noticed from Sunday night, Joe Roden is carrying out of the defence into midfield and that layer change. That's something that you want him to do more of? Yeah, we, the way we want to play, the way we want to build up. Of course, we... You know, we expect our centre-backs to, 
to be comfortable on the ball now in the modern game and and uh, and be that option for us and break lines. So no different for Joe as to what we would any other centre back. But it's it's been good watching his development. You know, I worked with Joe with the twenty ones and and watching him step into the championship with Swansea and uh, and and how he acquitted himself with that and then getting a, a fantastic move that he thoroughly deserves to Tottenham. Um, and again, you know, excited to see his development now in the next couple of years with Tottenham. Uh, and again, you know, we can reap the rewards of that the, the training he's going to be having at Tottenham, the coaching he's going to be getting. And when he's with us, he's hopefully going to show us signs of that. And, and a question on Norrington Davis and, and Nico on, on those wing back positions. I think, was there slight frustration that they weren't breaking the game line as much as you wanted to and going backwards? Maybe, is that, is that something you want them to do more of going forward and delivering those balls? Well, they can only do that if they've got the runs as well. So there's, that is one aspect of the, the, uh, the, the game that we've looked back on and identified. But they also need to have those runs in behind to, to help them play those balls. You know, it's pointless playing it if there's no runs in behind. So that's another area that we've, we've looked at, addressed and, and worked on today. So, yeah, it's um, irrespective of what formation you play. One thing Ryan wanted to do when he first came in was make more um, runs in behind you know, and, uh, and and be brave on the ball and find those passes and, and look forward first. So nothing changes with regards to that, whether you play a three or a four. So that's something we'll be looking to definitely improve on. And do you think that comes from the players playing together more? Because that front three as well, you know, they haven't played much together. And that's about con- connect- care, co- I can't even say it, connectivity. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's not easy to say that. Yeah, of course, the more you play together, more of an understanding they have on the pitch, absolutely. But, uh, you know, we've got intelligent footballers in there that, that know where the space is to exploit, know when to run in behind. So, um, yeah, when you, get the, when you get the balance right of, you know, um, continuity of playing together, it'll certainly improve, yeah. And last question from me, I've asked Ryan this before, but in terms of where you feel Wales could be, where are you on that journey? We're getting better camp by camp. I think we're... we're uh, hard to beat, hard to break down, um, and absolutely got quality in that squad that can hurt teams, you know. And and we're moving forward every camp, like I said. So it's we're we're developing the players. The younger players are coming through. I just mentioned Joe Roden there. You know, it's nice to see the younger players now that are, have played Championship football and getting their opportunity to play Premiership football. And uh, and, and Wills will only benefit from that. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the written press section now. Do you have any questions? Anyone want to kick us off? Hi, Sarah. Can I ask a few? Okay, Phil. Hi, Rob. Hope you're well. Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Just wanted to go back to the COVID situation. Can you just clarify the timeline once again? Did you say UEFA protocol is testing two days before and results back within 24 hours? Yeah, more often than not, that's that's how we've been doing it. Um, whether it's the whether it's UEFA that have um, tested us or whether the FA, the Football Association of Wales, have, have organised tests, you get the, the results within within 24 hours. Yeah. So, so for for example, this game, if any of your players are clear to play, they've had the results back, and, and that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody's uh, everybody's tested negative for this game. Yeah. Okay. Because because the confusion lies that. Presumably, each association can do it differently because, from Ireland's point of view, that they're saying that their players were tested on the morning of the game and then they got the results back yesterday. But that then begs the question: Should the likes of Doherty and McLean have been playing in the game against your team? No, well, it differs. So some associations will um, will use different testing companies. So all, all I can speak is for ourselves, and I can't speak for uh, for Ireland. Yeah, just just on the wider picture, do you, do you feel football's safe at the moment? Because we had the latest Premier League results yesterday, and there was a spike, and and there's been a lot of positive tests from players all across the world. Yeah, again, I can only speak for the protocols that we've put in place. You know, off the pitch, um, of course, there's going to be contact on the pitch. We've watched the game back, and um, you know, it's it's hard to determine really what is how long you've got to be in close contact for as well. If there's any risk whatsoever, we will absolutely not take the chance. Um, but with regards to the protocols that we've had in place now off the field as well, and, and with, with what the medical staff have done, has been second to none in my opinion. Again, you know, we've had uh, 
consistent negative tests. So that goes to show that we're obviously doing something right. Yeah, and, and just finally from me, you've been a club manager yourself. Could you understand their, their concerns right at this moment in time? Yeah, of course. We're, we're borrowing their players. We're borrowing world-class players. So, of course, I, I can understand managers' concerns coming away, but you know, it's no different from when they got them at the club. Um, we've all got a job to do as well, and, and we all want to win games of football, so it's about working together. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, we've got James Nursey with Sand up. Hi, Rob. Hiya, how are you? Good, good thank you. Um, good. Your match tomorrow night is obviously on primetime TV, um, and it's not the only event in Wales going on at the moment. There's a certain uh, I'm a celebrity in, in a Welsh castle that's getting quite a lot of column and inches. Uh, but would you hope to be the main event t tomorrow night and uh, fancy your team to get out of your group? That's the plan. Yeah, as long as my players are focused on the game and not I'm a celebrity, that'll be uh, that'll be a bonus. <laughs> um, yeah, we've we've done a lot of planning and a lot of work going into this camp, and uh, and we're all focused on on the one game. Now it comes down to this one game; it's in our control, so we're all prepared and, and ready for it. Thank you. Good luck. Cheers. Thanks. Okay. Any further questions for Rob? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Rob. I uh, hope you're both well. Um, so uh, Finland are looking strong offensively and defensively at the moment, um, particularly taking into account their 2-0 win in Paris last week. Um, do you think this is a bad time to be facing them in such an important fixture? Well, they're where, they're where they are in the group because they're a good team and they proved that against France. You know, we watched the game. France had a lot of possession, but ultimately when it comes down to chances, they take the chances and they don't concede a lot of goals. So it's going to be an extremely tough game. You know, and we know exactly what we're, what we're expecting, what we're up against. We'll show them that respect. But when we focus on what we've got in the changing room and what we can do on the pitch, then it should, be, uh, it, it should set it up nicely for, a, for an entertaining game, hopefully. Um, if you don't mind um, me just asking one more question. Um, the average age of your starting 11 in the game against Ireland was just under 24, um, with players as young as 19 and 20 starting. How important do you think um, important matches like these with quite a lot riding on them are to the development of them as young players and as a young squad? Yeah, of course, they're going to reap the rewards of it. Absolutely. There's nothing better than playing in competitive games like this uh, and with the importance of them. So they'll only become better having gone through the experience. So, yeah, you're right. You're right to say that the average age was, was quite young, 24. And, and it's great to see Ryan's always been part of that development when I was with the 21s and when he first took the job on, he was very much pro-youth. And, uh, and thankfully now we're reaping the rewards of that.